Hello again, everyone, and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to talk about malware. Now, there's this myth that when it comes to malware, that if you're running a Linux server, such as a Linode, that you don't actually have to worry about malware at all, and that's not entirely true. While it is true that Linux servers are going to be in a better position to avoid infection from malware, that doesn't make it impossible. When it comes to users, I mean, who's to say what our users are going to do from one minute to the next? A user in our system could actually upload an infected file to a file server, for example, and if they do that, they might make that file available for other people, even though the Linux server itself isn't actually being infected by that file. So it's up to us as Linux administrators to scan our systems and understand what kinds of files we have on our systems, and a periodic check of malware, well, that's a great idea. So in this video, that's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do. I'm going to show you how to use ClamScan, ClamAV, basically, to scan your server for infected files. There's going to be two different methods that we're going to go over in this video, and let's dive right in. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first method that I'm going to show you is how to do an offline scan of your Linode. So we're going to reboot it in rescue mode, and then we're going to use the Phoenix tool to launch a scanner that will let us know whether or not we have any infected files on the file system. And here I have an Ubuntu instance that I'm going to use as my test subject. So let's click right here where we see the three dots. And then down here we have rescue. I'm going to click on that. And I'll scroll down here and I'll click on reboot into rescue mode. So what I'm going to do is click on launch Lish console. And what this is going to do is give me a window that I can use to see what's going on with the instance. It's essentially the same as attaching a monitor to the instance. And now we can see that it's booting up. And now we're logged in. So notice right here it says Phoenix. And that's the name of the live environment that's being used in rescue mode. We have a command prompt for logged in as root. So what that means is that we should be able to access the file system of the disk and then scan it to see whether or not we have any infected files. And in fact, we have a dedicated command that we can use for this purpose. I'm gonna make the font size a bit bigger here to make sure you guys are able to see this. And hopefully that's big enough. So what I'm going to do is run the Linode clam command. It looks like this. And this should trigger the clam AV scanner to scan the file system. Let's see if it works, I'll press enter. And now the scan has officially started. The Linode clam command installed clam AV, which is a very popular scanning utility for Linux to scan the file system. And it's going to go ahead and scan the file system right now. I'm very interested to see whether or not it finds something on the server. So I'm going to give it a little while to run and then I'll be right back. All right, so the scan has finally completed. And as you can see right here, it took about 12 minutes for this particular scan to finish. And depending on how many files you have on your Linode instance, then that's going to be different for you. But I'm really happy that I scanned this one because check this out. I actually do have an infected file on the system. Now, to be honest, all I did was just add a test file over to this particular instance to trigger a false positive. But we can go ahead and pretend like this is a really bad file that we found on the file system, and we definitely need to take care of it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the log and see what exactly it found. And with a scanner that we just used, there's a very specific place where we'll find the results of the scan. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into the slash media directory and then SDA, clam AV, and then log. And as you can see, we do have a scan log here that'll contain all the results of the scan that we've already done. And that's going to be quite a large file, so I'm not going to open it. But I just wanted to make sure you guys knew where that file could be found in case you want to go ahead and look at the results. But if I go back a directory, 
we actually have a quarantine directory. And inside there we have badfile.txt. And that's the file that was found during the scan, the same file that I added to the Linode instance on purpose. Now, I don't recommend that you add any bad files to your Linode instance because that's against the terms of service. In my case, this is just a false positive file just to show you guys what it looks like. But if it did actually find a legitimately bad file, this is where you'd find it. And there it is. There's badfile.txt. So what I've done just now is I have reset the entire process because I want to show you guys how you can actually scan manually. The dedicated command from Linode is very useful, but maybe you have a very specific place you want to scan, or perhaps you want to use special options. In either case, it's probably a good idea to understand the process of manually scanning, which is exactly what we're going to do right now. So first I'm going to run apt update. And that'll make sure that the list of available packages in this environment are completely up to date. Next, I'm going to run apt install. And the name of the package that we want to install is clamav. And I just press enter when it asked if I wanted to continue. And now that we have clamav installed, we need to mount the disk of the Linode. When we're running in rescue mode, we don't actually have the local disk of the Linode instance mounted automatically, so we'll need to take care of that. So what I'm going to do is run lsblk. That'll give us a list of all the block devices on the system. And we have SDA right here. Most likely that's going to be the one that you want to target unless you have a second disk or something like that. It's more than likely going to be SDA. And what we need to do is create a directory for where we want to mount that to. And I'm going to create slash media slash SDA. And then I'm going to run the command mount and then dash O. And we're going to set barrier to zero. The device that I want to mount is slash dev slash SDA. And we're going to mount that to the directory that we just created. And that should be good enough. Now, if I run LSBLK again, note that SDA shows a mount point right here of slash media slash SDA. So far, so good. And the next thing that we need to do is create the directories where we want the log file to be stored as well as the quarantine files to be stored if it finds any. So we're going to run mkdir-p and we're going to create slash media, sda, clamav, and then log. And we're going to do the same thing again, but we're going to change the name of the directory at the end here to quarantine. And now we should be ready to scan the file system. So now that we have clamav installed and ready to go, I went ahead and typed out the command that we're going to use for the manual scan. So I started it off with clamscan-r, and then I added the dash dash log option, which allows me to set the location for the log file. And I set it to this location right here, the scan.log file in one of the directories that we created earlier. And then I added the dash dash move option. And I set that to the other directory that we created earlier. Now normally you would actually start that scan from slash media slash SDA so you can essentially scan the entire disk. But in the interest of time, I decided to target a very specific location. On the actual disk for this Linode, I have a directory under slash MNT called file store. It's wrapped a little bit, but you can see that here at the end. Again, what I recommend on your end is that you scan the entire disk. Anyway, I'll press enter. And there we go. The scan is finished. And again, it found another infected file. Just like last time, I added that file myself. It's just a false positive file. Again, it's against the terms and conditions to send any infected files to your Linode instance. But in my case, it's a false positive file, so we're fine. And right here, it tells me the name of the malware that it thinks it found. And then it gives me the location that it moved it to. And as you can see, it moved it into the quarantine folder that we created earlier. So we were successfully able to run an entire scan manually on our system. And we have the scan summary right here 
that gives us an overview of what exactly happened. In my case, it only took a moment, but that's because I targeted a very specific folder. On your end, it's probably going to take a lot longer if you are scanning your entire file system, which is what's recommended, so that if there's anything on your file system regardless of the directory, then ClamAV will find it and move it into the quarantine folder. So there you go. I hope this video was helpful and you now know how to scan your system for infected files with ClamScan, and that's great. Every now and then, it doesn't hurt to scan your servers for infected files. As administrators, we have to keep on top of what's on our servers, and this is just one example of how to do that. So I hope you found this video helpful. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already done so, and click that like button because that lets YouTube know that you want to see more content just like this. Thanks for watching.